for Filipinos are looking at life overseas, especially as the world transitions to a post-COVID normal. And one of the ways our Kababayans can secure residence or citizenship abroad is through investment. Jeffrey Hensler and Daniel Durich of Passport Legacy tell us more. Join us live in the studio. Jeff, Daniel, great to have you with us. Jeff, let me start off with you. Why should people acquire these residency and citizenship by investment programs? Rico, first of all, thank you very much mm. for the invitation here. People generally try to obtain a second residency or citizenship in order for their children to have access to better education, have a plan B in the pocket in case anything happens in their home country, or they just look for a way to travel visa-free around the globe for business or vacation purposes. Mm -hmm. You are Swiss. Correct. And you carry a Swiss passport, one right. of the most powerful passports in the world. Absolutely. But why do you still carry a second passport from the Caribbean? Well, I'm a decade in this industry. <laughs> and I always compare it to if you sell your whole life Range Rovers. At some point, you want to drive your own, right? That, first of all, gives me the experience also because I travel a lot with it. Mm. If I access a certain country, I want to know the reactions because based on that, I can give best advice of what certain clients may face in terms of questions at immigration. And um, Daniel, tell us, these kinds of passports, can I, can yeah, can I take course, a look definitely. at it? Uh, your passport from uh, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. I mean, it doesn't come cheap. What kind of investment does a Filipino who wants to have a second passport, what does he have to do? Absolutely. So currently, for, if a Filipino wants to invest in a second passport, the minimum amount that he needs to consider is $100,000. Mm. And these are countries in the Caribbean located south of uh, Florida and in countries like San Lucia, for example, a $100,000 investment uh, grants you a second passport. Mm. The one of Jeffrey is a St. Kitts and Nevis passport. He obtained it a few years ago where it was only $150,000. However, a few months ago, the government in the country has decided to increase it to $250,000. All right, if you take a look at the Philippine passport, it is the 66th to 68th strongest passport in the world and i would rather say it is a weak passport overall if you get a caribbean passport how strong are these passports from grenada st kitts and nevis and other countries you move usually up to around 35th play or for 35th place mm. but that immediately grants you visa free access to the Schengen area for example to mm. the UK to Singapore to Hong Kong and to many other nations that certain people may have the need to travel to not only for vacation but especially for business purposes mm -hmm. and of course uh, Daniel these are stronger passports but a lot of Filipinos apart from going to EU Schengen and, and the UK, also like to travel around the region, such as Japan and South Korea, which also requires <laughs> visas for Filipino passport holders. To, if you acquire these kinds of passports, will you be able to travel as well visa-free to these um, first world Asian nations? So for Japan, unfortunately not. Mm. With a Caribbean passport, you also have to apply for a tourist visa. However, in Korea, the situation is a little bit better because with a San Lucia or San Kitts and Nevis uh, or Grenada passport, you can actually travel visa fee to the country. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, Jeffrey, whenever I talk to a lot of Filipinos who want to live in Europe or want that second passport or that golden visa, it is Portugal yes, and Spain. Yes. That's what I hear from so many Filipinos. Yes. Um, are there other European countries that they could also explore uh -huh. in Europe? Well, due to the agreement between the Philippines and Spain, for example, mm. a Filipino national can make an investment into Spain and generally or get the citizenship with only, within only two years. Mm. In Portugal, it's a little bit different. Investment needs to be done. There are also residency requirements, but they're quite limited to about seven days a year. And based on that and the language test, which is Portuguese that needs to be passed, mm -hmm. plus you connect a little bit to the local communities in Portugal, you potentially can first of all apply and then receive citizenship of Portugal. But uh, have investments into these two uh, European nations already increased from like five to ten years ago? 
Uh, most probably, yes, but I would say it's still quite affordable, mainly because in Spain especially you invest into real estate. Mm. So you have a pretty safe asset, I would say. It's Spain at the end of the day. In Portugal, they just removed the real estate route, but there is a bond option available that also generates certain returns. So both options, Spain and Portugal, are still attractive. And Daniel, are there now other European countries apart from Spain and Portugal that are also getting to this residency and citizenship by investment programs? Absolutely. So if someone want to obtain a passport directly, Malta has a citizenship mm. investment program. But more popular programs are definitely Greece because it has a um, lower investment amount of only 250,000 euros investment in real estate. And it also grants a permanent residency. Other, pro other countries that offer residency are Malta as well, uh, on top of the citizenship, Italy, and Switzerland has its own unique way to obtain residency, but it's a little bit more complicated because taxation comes into play. And for Filipinos, uh, Jeffrey, why should they be getting these second passports? Everybody has a different plan in their life, I would mm. say. Certain Filipinos, they say, you know what? We would like to go to Canada or to the United mm. States. We would like to have our children educated over there. I have a great business idea, for example. And Canada is very, very keen on your idea. So if you invest into your own business, about 250,000 US dollars, and you go and, and reside there, within, a, within uh, five years approximately, you would be entitled to receive citizenship. So during the time you already can, and you also have to live there, at least three out of five years and based on that yeah you will get citizenship so that's one part of the of our mm. clientele that comes to us what about uh, in the united states there yes. are so many millions of filipinos who live in the united states mm -hmm. and for every filipino it is their dream to migrate to the united states or live in the united states or for their children to be yeah. educated in the united states and it takes time sometimes for the relatives to claim them and for them to get a green card. What is the other route? I'm sure it is also heavy investment, but please Absolutely. let us know. Absolutely. Daniel actually just handled the client like that. Maybe you can tell more. That's correct. It's a pretty straightforward way uh, with an $800,000 investment. 800,000 US dollars. That's correct. Okay. Worth to say that it is an investment and the capital go back to the investor after five to six years. But this is the most direct way for an individual, a wealthy individual, to obtain a permanent residency or a green card in the United States together with the family. And the program is uh, US EB-5 visa. Very EB5 common visa. and very popular. 800,000 US dollars, if you compute that to the uh, current uh, US dollar peso exchange rate, that's about 50 million pesos. Well, that's a lot of money, right? That's what the US wants, right? That's what the US <laughs> wants. That's what the US wants, of course. But uh, is it open to anybody? Can anybody apply if they have $800,000? Or are they investigated first about their background and where the money is coming from? Very important question. So uh, programs all over the globe are generally open to all nationalities, besides some restriction because of sanction, like the Russians at the moment or the Iranian. However, uh, every individual can apply as long as he can prove where the funds have been generated, mm. as well as the individual and the family have a clean criminal background. Mm -hmm. These are very important conditions that we assess before onboarding clients, but as well once we submit application to the different programs globally, the unit or the government will assess the background, of course, before giving an approval. All right. Uh, Passport Legacy, uh, Jeffrey, uh, was founded uh, about uh, five years ago. Yeah, correct. First of October 2018, yes. So, uh, how are you faring right now in the Philippines in getting new clients? Yeah, so about a year and a half ago, we started with our Singapore office led by Daniel. Mm. And we've seen immediately a big demand in Filipino nationals wanting to get that other residency or citizenship. So we have at the moment one person, a client advisor based here full time. We have a big processing department, of course, in Singapore. And uh, yeah, now step by step, we come more and more into this market with opening our own office in the Philippines here in Manila beginning of next year. Oh, beginning of next year. Yeah. you'll be uh, investing here in the Philippines Absolutely. with a representative office. Correct. But apart, of course, from Filipinos, who else from Asia are uh, trying to take advantage of these uh, golden visas and uh, second passports? Mm -hmm. There is no really a nationality uh, per se because people just want to have a plan B, want to mm -hmm. have more mobility, more freedom. 
So really we have nationalities from all over the world. And in Asia, yes, Chinese as well, Indians, Filipinos, Vietnamese, Indonesia. So people just want to have plan B, want to be able to send the kids to better schools, want the kids to, when they reach 18 years old, to be able to make their own choice and be able to live whatever they want. So it's not a matter of nationality, it's a matter of I have the means, I want to prepare myself and my family for a better future. Are there other Asian countries uh, also adopting this residency and citizenship by uh, investment programs, Jeffrey? So Thailand has a visa that mainly speaks to people that wish to retire there, for example. Uh, there are also Singapore, of course, which is very interesting, right, for certain people that want to actually move to Singapore. Apart from that, not too much or not too many options. Really, mm -hmm. Europe focuses a lot on it because they have more to offer in a way where that the residency card alone in the Schengen zone will already allow you to travel visa-free within the Schengen zone and to live in the country that issued your residency. So most of these uh, golden visas and second passports are in Western Europe, in the Caribbean. Yes, absolutely mm -hmm. correct. Yes. All right. Um, how can, if, they, if, if our viewers want to know more about Passport Legacy and your services, how can they contact you? Absolutely. We have a beautiful website, PassportLegacy.com. Ah. We have a wonderful Instagram account, Passport Legacy Global. And otherwise, yeah, best is go, going to our website and then scheduling a direct meeting with us. All right. Um, last question, uh, Daniel. Of course, everybody knows that there is a, an expensive investment. But what about the fees of Passport Legacy? Are there fees? if they are successful investors in these countries? Yes, of course, we are, a, we are an advisory firm. We help clients through the process, which take between three to 12 months, depending on the program. And we charge a fee that varies between 15 to $30,000, depending on the family size, the program, and the length of the uh, process itself. And all the best to your visit here in the Philippines and recruiting more Filipinos to have that golden visa and that second passport. Thank you so much, Rico. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so Appreciate much it. for having us. Jeffrey Hensler, the CEO and founder of Passport Legacy, based in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And you have Daniel Durich, the managing director of Passport Legacy, based in Singapore. Thank you so Gentlemen, much. Gentlemen, good evening. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. And